Alright, what's good y'all? So it's been a little minute, but yeah, but I'm about to break down the sample right now, so let's get straight into it. It's a pretty simple sample, not too complicated, but you know, the complicated melodies are coming. But yeah, let's get into it. I'm gonna just show you how I made it. It's like four sounds in the samples. I'm gonna just do it how I usually do it. Break down the MIDI, show you the processing, and show you the techniques or whatever. So the first sound is this guitar right here. And also got a automation down here. So, so we got two different variations of it. And the second one right here. So the VST is contact and I use this afterglow bank by Spitfire and I really mess with this bank because it's not as big like the other banks they got they like they have the Albion banks and they take up like hella space this one is like a little smaller it comes with one guitar you know and then you got all these options down here to switch out like how the guitar is played but it sounds really fire and it's way cheaper like the big banks costs like 450 euros this one is like around 40 or something like that so it's way more affordable and it just takes faster to load and it's just easier to use but yeah this is the guitar i went with the long duo preset right here i turned off the chorus and the church reverb kept a little bit of the plate reverb because i added my own reverbs later on in the sample i'm gonna show you the midi now so it's actually really simple i'm gonna play it first So, like I say, it's super simple. So I'm gonna just explain the music theory behind it. So I'm gonna delete everything up until here. And I'm gonna delete these two and this one as well. So basically, this whole melody is just one chord. It's the F minor chord. If we look at these three notes, it's just F minor chord. And then I just move them around uh, and try to find a nice like rhythm with them. And I came up with this one right here. And then these three up here is also to the F minor chord. It's just the third right here, the root note right here. And then we got the half step, you know, if you got a minor chord, if we're making a loop in the F minor scale and we got an F minor chord, there's always a half step down below the third note right here. So that's the G. And I just pitched them up right here. So we got this little thing on repeat right here. And like I said, I just kept it on repeat for four bars. I mean, I could have made a new chord right here, like pitch it down five semitones or something. Like this. It also works. I just kept it one chord because I just thought it sounded good enough. I just like how it looped with one chord, so I just kept it one chord. After this little thing going on, I just added these two notes up here. Like this. And yeah, I guess that's the counter melody, super simple, just two notes. And it kind of like breaks the repetitiveness of the melody and makes it a little bit more unique, I guess. That's what it sounds like with the, with the counter melody. So pretty simple. I did add some effects to this. First the effect I added was an EQ, taking out the lows so I could make room for the bass line later on in the sample. So the sample usually sounds a little bit more warmer when you take out the high frequencies of it. So it's what it sounds like now. Yeah, I barely cut out anything really. But yeah, after that I added this effect track and I just went with the basic vintage punch preset and it just adds a little bit of distortion and some grittiness to the sample. So here's what it sounds like with the distortion. After that, I added a dial P. I turned down the mix a lot, and I turned down all of these. It's very subtle, but again, it's just like some more like greediness, some vintage kind of effects to it, you know, make it sound a little bit more like old or like not so human. After that, I added the delay tape by Arturia, and I went with this preset, and it's really crazy, because it's like four dotted and eight dotted, so it's like triplets and fast triplets, I guess. I'm not really sure, but this first one is put to like 116. This one is put to 1 8th, so it's like different rhythms in the left and the right. I don't even know how this works, but if you listen to it, it's like very subtle delays in the background of the sample, so the main melody is very present still, but this adds like hella notes in the background. It just makes it sound more full, and it just sounds better. So I'm gonna just show you how it sounds with this song. And then finally just a sound shifter pitching down the sample to semitones and that's the last thing I added.
So like each of these effects are very subtle, but if we compare the whole mixer chain bypassed versus uh, like on right here, there's a noticeable uh, difference in the sample. So now it's bypassed. Yeah, cool. So that was the first sample. Uh, after that, I added this little thing right here. Basically, it's just a cinematic pad just to fill up some frequencies and make the sample sound more full. And it's actually from the same bank, but it's not in the regular guitar, it's in the texture section. So if you get this bank, you would get like a guitar and a hell of textures. So this texture was the Forlorn Island preset. I just kept everything the same, fixed it out of here. I just copy pasted these top notes from the guitar over to the preset and kept it just like that. I had to move these ones though to the side because the attack was like really slow on the preset. So the note hits here, but the sound really comes in around this line right here. And I didn't add any effects to this. I just put it to stereo, make it a little bit more wider. So you, like you can really hear it in the background of the sample. Together, they sound like this. Now the last sound for the first section right here is this bass line right here. And it's just a one shot bass from Pilgrim's uh, one shot kit right here, this Shire Crest. Since it's just one chord in the melody, I had to like get creative with some bounces here and here. So I didn't change up like the bass line either, I just kept it, like let it follow the, the root note of the sample. So I'm gonna play it together with the other melodies. Just some extra bounce, you know, to make it a little bit more interesting. So that's really the whole first eight bars of the sample. After that, for the B part, I just removed this pad thing and kept everything else, like the bass and the guitar. Nothing interesting. And now for the third part, I kept this uh, regular guitar right here. But I added it to Mixer Channel 10 right here. And I added a filter M12 to it, this preset. And now it sounds like this. You know, just to add some variation to the sample, trying to add some effects to flip it in a new way, make it sound different, you know? Also kept the bass, and I added this pattern right here as well. Which is from the Prop 5 uh, by Arturia. I went with the Vecna preset right here, and here's the pattern. You know, just some synth notes. Thought it would fit the sample with some synthy, prophet, vintage synth vibes with the sample. So I just used these notes right here, just freestyled some random notes. And then for the effects, I just copy pasted over the original effects chain from the guitar over to the synth. So we got the same effect track with the basic vintage punch, the same dial P right here. And then I added this EQ instead, taking out some of the highs. Not too much though. Around here. Now this part sounds like this. And then for the final part, I just took out this synth, the Prophet, and kept the, the new flipped guitar with the bass line right here. And yeah, after that, you know, I just added the stems right here, get both versions of the guitar and the rest of the stems, bounced it out. I routed it to Mixture Channel 20. Uh, yeah, I just added the stems at the end and bounced it out. I didn't do anything to it really. And uh, I just turned up the volume for it. I think right here, turned up all the way. And now here's the final sample. I usually look at it this way. So if you got a complicated MIDI, I would say this is like kind of complicated. It's not just like two chords or anything. There's like a lot of stuff going on. So when I start a melody off, keeping it like sort of complicated, I don't add too many counter melodies. As you can see, I just added a bass line and a pad just to fill out some frequencies. But if I would have started with like a super simple melody, something like this right here.
there would have been way more room for like crazy leads and like more counter melodies and more pockets for different stuff but since this one already was like sort of full this melody right here i felt like i didn't have to add too much stuff to it so you know it's, it's a simple melody not too much going on but i feel like it's a good melody at the same time but yeah that's pretty much it for the video hope you enjoyed it it was like a shorter video i feel like but yeah we're back bro if you liked it leave a like comment and subscribe and i'm gonna catch y'all in the next video peace